Hello, everyone. As she said, my name is Chloe, but for seven weeks of last year, I didn't go by the name Chloe. Instead, I responded to the name Little B, which was my trail name while backpacking the Appalachian Trail. Some of you might be familiar with the Appalachian Trail already, but for those of you who don't know about it, um, the AT is a national scenic foot trail, the first ever completed, that stretches along the eastern United States for 2,190 miles, approximately. It was completed in 1937, and it has gained tremendous popularity since then. Thousands of, year, thousands of hikers every year go to attempt to hike the entire trail in one undertaking, which is known as a through hike. But the Appalachian Trail Conservancy estimates that of these thousands, only one in four will actually make it the entire distance from Springer Mountain in Georgia all the way to Catawba Mountain in Maine. I went for a lot of reasons. Um, I began at Fontana Dam at the beginning of the Great Smoky Mountains and went all the way to Parisburg, Virginia. And I ultimately wound up completing 470 miles of the trail. Today, I want to share with you all the story of my time on trail, which is a story about the Appalachian Trail about human nature, about addiction and recovery, about community, and about overcoming adversity. Additionally, I want to leave you all pondering over some of the paradoxes that I experienced while I was on trail. And my goal is not to offer you definitive answers, but rather to leave you asking some of the very important questions that came to my mind after my time on trail. I went to the Appalachian Trail for so many reasons. I had an older friend that had backpacked the entire thing while I was still in high school, and his stories were absolutely thrilling. I have always loved the outdoors, and I wasn't afraid of the idea of being in the wilderness alone. In fact, I relished the idea. At a time in my life when I was undergoing a major transition, having just graduated from community college and preparing to transition to a four-year university, and move from my hometown to an unfamiliar place, I felt like spending seven weeks walking and thinking was probably exactly what I needed. I sublet my apartment, I put my possessions into storage, and I caught a Greyhound bus out to Asheville where a friend lived. He dropped me off at Fontana Dam, which is the beginning of the Smokies, right here. My first several weeks on trail were physically very brutal. My soft student body, which was so perfectly acclimated for long hours at a desk, underwent changes I could never have predicted, and my back and joints and feet protested the entire way. But in spite of the physical duress and getting rained on rather frequently, I found myself instantly enthralled with the trail and the brand new life that I had on it. My first week on trail was very comparable to a first week in another country. I found myself immersed in a new culture and a new lifestyle. I had expected to spend many hours alone, but instead I found that while the trail was perhaps not crowded, it had far more people on it than I had anticipated. These people came from a wide slew of backgrounds, from addicts to convicts on the run, to furniture factory workers, to doctors, from Americans to Canadians to Germans, there was no limit to the diversity of people that I met. These people often convened at shelters in the evenings, which are built every so many miles along the Appalachian Trail, usually every five to 10 miles. Many people find themselves camping with the same individuals night after night and wind up forming groups as they fall into sync with them. I quickly found myself joining one such group. On my second night on trail, I met three of the most fascinating characters I have ever been privileged to befriend. Their names were Bucket, that's right, and rub and tug. Very interesting names, right? That's because on the Appalachian Trail, we almost never use our real names. Instead, we use trail names. I told you all earlier how I went by the trail name Little Bee. I was given this name for my bee tattoo, and after I told some other hikers I was a beekeeper. While trail names may seem like something fun and silly at the surface, they're actually representative of a much deeper theme of the Appalachian Trail, that of identity recreation. When you've set foot on the Appalachian Trail, anything that has come before no longer matters. Your background, your way of life, all hikers are equal in status. 
The wilderness is humbling. We spoke about this often on trail. We refer to the Appalachian Trail as the great equalizer. Suffering the pains of true physical duress fosters a powerful sense of shared identity. The resulting community of hikers is a tightly knit inclusive group. There are no exclusions or prejudices. Hikers look out for one another without question. Bucket and That's Right were Mississippians who had come to hike the Appalachian Trail together. They had met Rub and Tug some weeks previous as they had fallen into step together. They already had a group name. They were the OFS crew, which stood for old, fat, or slow, because they were the fastest group on the Appalachian Trail, and they claimed that you had to meet one of these descriptors in order to be a member of the group. Now I joined the crew. My pace on trail qualified me for membership. We continued through the Smokies and stopped for a resupply in Gatlinburg. This is what resupplying for hikers looks like. <laughs> we continued over Klingman's Dome and through the Smokies until one cold, rainy day towards the end of our time in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, we stopped at a shelter to have a snack and warm up. It was there that we met our next member of the group, Gump, who was hanging out in the shelter, sick from dope withdrawal. It would be a week and a half before we would learn it, but Gump was on the run from the disease of addiction and from the criminal justice system. Gump was a meth addict from Iowa who had spent several years in and out of prisons due to drug-related charges. He had been on parole in Iowa when suddenly he had realized that he was never going to stay clean while still surrounded by the same people, places, and things that were triggering for his addiction. But how could Gump relocate out of that area while on parole and with scant resources or money? It was then that he decided he was going to backpack the Appalachian Trail. He skipped out on parole, he caught a bus from Iowa to Nashville, Tennessee, and from there he hitchhiked and walked to the nearest AT trail.